What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the difference between rack instruments and instrument tracks inside of Cubase. I've been getting a lot of comments on how to use either or and today I'm going to show you the different functions, why is it beneficial and why you should use one over the other. So let's get right to it. Before we dive into Cubase, let's go ahead and get a brief definition on what an instrument track is and what a rack instrument track is. So an instrument track is probably what you are already used to. So a definition of an instrument track is one sound, one plugin. That's it. So every time you want to use a brand new sound, you're going to open up another instance, another track right below that, and it's going to have another plugin and another sound. But now with rack instruments, you can have one plugins with multiple sounds. And in the example I'm going to show you today, which is using contact, I can have up to 16 sounds inside of one instance of contact. So the benefits of using rack instruments is you can combine like instruments. So maybe it's a keyboard family or maybe different kinds of string family, or you can separate them by articulation. So articulation seems to be the more popular way to use rack instruments, but I'll go ahead and show you what I mean by using same instruments as well. So let's go ahead and dive inside of Cubase to show you the difference between rack instruments and instrument track. So in this example, I'm going to show you what a standard instrument track looks like. So if we go in and we add an instrument track and let's say I want to add in, for example, Keyscape. Keyscape is a piano VST piano sample library where it has a bunch of different keyboard samples of a bunch of different pianos. And I can go ahead and load them up one by one. And if I want to use another piano, I have to load up another track and another instance of Keyscape to use that. So for example, if I go in here and I say I want to use the C7 custom rock piano and I start playing, I have my custom rock piano. Now let's say I want to use the cinematic piano. If I move out of the, the rock piano, then it's going to load up the cinematic one and I lost the rock one. So what I would need to do is open up, duplicate the track, and then go into the new Keyscape plugin and hit the cinematic piano. And now I have my cinematic piano. We already understand what an instrument track is because I'm pretty sure if you're watching this video, you're more interested in what is a rack instrument. So let's go ahead and take a look at the rack instrument. The way we load up a rack instrument is by, let me just go ahead and delete this so we don't get confused, is by going to the right panel on your Cubase screen. So we're going to click this right panel right here, and we're going to go into VSTI, and notice how here it says rack. This is where we add our rack instrument. So when I click rack instrument, I'm going to go into the plugin contact. Now I'm going to tell you why I'm using contact in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and also create the MIDI track because it says, do you want to create a MIDI track? I'm going to hit create. So what is the reason behind using contact? So when I use contact, contact is essentially a hosting platform. It just hosts the sound, but contact itself is not a plugin that you can play. Like it's not an instrument. So what contact does is that sample library companies, they create the software that's then integrated inside of contact. So contact is just the player window, but now the actual instruments that we have inside of contact are made by either native instruments themselves or by third party companies. So let's say, for example, I want to load up a violin one by Cinestrings. I can just double click. And now here inside of my contact player, I have one instance of true legato violin one sound. If I play the piano, I get some sound out of my contact instance. So now where's the true advantage of using a rack instrument? Well, here it is. I have one instance of contact. I have one sound, but what if I want to create, let's say instead of using just the legato technique, I want to use string shorts or what we call spiccato. So if I go into my split patches and I open up, for example, I do violin one spiccato right here, spiccato. It's going to open up a second version of this violins one patch. But now if I try to play it, 
you're still getting sound out of the true legato patch. So what we need to do is we need to duplicate the track. And before I show you where to change the channels here, we're going to open up the instance of true legato and open up the instance of spiccato. And notice how here it says MIDI channel 1. And if we look at spiccato, it says MIDI channel 2. Now in the track we duplicated, all we need to do is switch it to number 2. And if we play, we see that we get sound out of spiccato 2. So now you're starting to see the advantages of using something like Rack Instruments, where you can load multiple samples inside of Contact, and then just change one little channel setting on the duplicate channel, and we get a completely different sound. So now we're going to go ahead and show you another example using a different violin patch. We're going to pull up a Violin 1 tremolo patch, and we're going to run through the same setting. So notice how here it says MIDI channel 3. We're going to go ahead and duplicate the track and then switch that to MIDI channel 3, and then look how we get sound out of the tremolo. So that's an example of using violins or string instruments and separating them out with rack instruments by articulation. So what I'm going to show you now is grouping them by instrument types, and I'm going to do that using piano sounds. So for now, I'm going to place these tracks inside of a new folder and just call it example 1 for now. And I'm going to go on to the right side and create a new rack instrument that's going to have another contact instance. I'm going to create the MIDI track. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up three different piano types. So the first one I'm going to open up is the Maverick. And then I'm going to open up the Grandeur piano. And then the last one I'm going to open up is going to be the Gentleman piano. So now here we're going to start duplicating our tracks and then we're automatically just going to change those numbers to 2 and then 3. And then we're going to go ahead and give it a play test to see if we have this working correctly. So number 1 is going to be the Maverick. Number 2 is going to be the Grandeur. And number 3 is going to be the Gentleman. So now, again, why is this beneficial? Well, now if we go on the left side here and we're playing, let's say, a track, we can again group this into a folder. We're going to call this, let's call it by their real name. So we're going to say these are pianos and these are going to be violin one. Let's just call them violin one. And we're going to go ahead and close this folder, close this as well. Now here you start to see that you have one instance of contact with multiple instruments inside of it. So now when you're creating your tracks or you're playing your tracks, you're like, oh, well, now I want to use a different piano sound. I can go into my contact folder, and I know that this one up here is, for example, the Maverick piano. This one here is Grandeur, and this one here is going to be Gentleman. I can quickly just choose the piano I want to play, again, under one plugin, and it's already loaded up. Now, what you can do with this afterwards is you can create a template of maybe your favorite piano sounds or something like that, and you're able to create a template where you have those sounds already loaded up for you. So this is how you create rack instruments. You're now just starting to see maybe a practical way for you to use rack instruments instead of instrument tracks. Again, if you want to see a performance test of this, I link that down in my description. So you can go ahead and check out how that affects your computer too because that's also another reason as to maybe why you'd want to use something like a rack instrument or an instrument track. If you do have any questions, just drop your comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to share this video with your musician friends. Also, if you're interested in my members only club, I show you how I create my massive music template using a multi-computer setup. I show you how to connect those two computers using a program called Vienna Ensemble Pro and how I actually take advantage of rack instruments in order to create a template with over 800 tracks inside of my master template. So if you want to join the members only club, you can go ahead and click the join button now and I will see you in the next video.